Now let's talk about Werner's Law, one of the biggest exceptions to Grimm's Law. So let's look at this example that we've seen earlier in this set of videos. Here we have the Indo-European reconstructed word for father, which becomes the English word father. I insist that this is an exception to Grimm's Law, even though it's one of the first examples that you tend to learn when discussing Grimm's Law. And I've underlined these two letters to help you think why that may be the case. Now, Grimm's Law says that T becomes th, and it kind of looks like that's what's happening here. But remember, for linguistics, we care about sound, not spelling. So T becomes th, according to Grimm's Law, but this sound here is a the, not a th. It's the voiced version, not the voiceless one. That's a problem because Grimm's Law says that our voiceless stops should become voiceless fricatives. Now, according to the neo-grammarian hypothesis, all sound change is supposed to be regular and without exception. We shouldn't have this seeming exception to Grimm's Law in words like father and also brother, mother, and so on. So in order to explain this, the only way that we can is to say that there has to be some other sound law, some other rule that prevents Grimm's law from applying. Maybe it happens first and then Grimm's law is no longer relevant. And that's called Werner's law. To understand Werner's law, we have to talk a little bit more about the Proto-Indo-European pronunciation system. Proto-Indo-European words are reconstructed as having an accent. That's a syllable that's stressed more heavily, or perhaps it's a higher tone. But it's similar to English, that we have one stressed syllable per word. This accent can be reconstructed based off of Greek and Sanskrit, both of which have accents. And so by understanding the rules of how Greek and Sanskrit accents work, we can generally figure out where they are in Proto-Indo-European. Werner's law has to do with the accent in the Proto-Indo-European word. So voiceless stops, which according to Grimm's law should become voiceless fricatives, will instead become voiced fricatives if they're not in the first syllable and the preceding syllable, the one that comes before it, is not accented. So here in the word for father, our accent is actually the second syllable, the ter. So what that means is the t is not part of the first syllable and the syllable preceding it is not accented. This means that it's subject to Werner's law and comes out as a voiced the instead of a voiceless th. That gives us father. If we look at the root for seven, which will add an accented suffix based on the language, that's where we get the N from in English. We get an M in Latin. We get an A in Greek. But that's the accented syllable, not this first one. So this P is in the second syllable, and the preceding syllable is unaccented. So that means that it's also subject to Werner's law. So instead of the voiceless f, we have the corresponding voiced sound v, giving us seven. So just to wrap up on Grimm's law, are there other seeming exceptions to Grimm's law? Yes, Werner's law is one of the most important ones, but it's far from the only one. But many of them can be explained by rules like this, by a deeper understanding of how the Proto-Indo-European sound system works. Next time, we'll come back and we'll look at some approaches in modern linguistics and go into more detail about how scholars actually do phonetics, phonology, and morphology. Thank you.